don't think it's going to be Mathieu van der Poel with 4.5 kilometres to go and three quarters of a minute, Brian. That's a big gap. No, it's, I don't think it's, it's the, the chase from EF Education. He's supposed these have to continue to write. It's the only way. Um, start messing around. 44 seconds could be snaffled up very, very quickly. But I think they realise now it's better to have three than four because they know that they're almost, they are almost uh, guaranteed a, a podium place here if they continue this. Van Seven has made it back. That's that's significant. Uh, I think Van Seven is the linchpin here to to what happens in the running. I don't think he'll be wanting to do much. Oh, just looking at those barriers and they've caught somebody. Uh, exposed barrier feet, Carap not what you want at all. I think it was Carapaz, yeah. yeah uh, who else been... has been tagged here? No, it's no, uh, Marijn it uh, Vandenberg. It is. Um, but the thing is, the fact that Van Seven is here, he Good. knows that he's not and he's starting to miss turns. They might be a little bit worried about him. And he's, he, he will try and force it. He will try and attack. He'll get his breath back. He won't do anything at all in the last three and a half kilometres. But I think he'll, he'll want to try and kind of distance uh, the other three and run in towards the final. But they're starting to play around now. La Pera is only nine seconds behind, but I think the effort coming so close to the finish now, I think, you know, that's going to blunt his sprint. But I really do think that uh, Tom Pitcock is a little bit worried about Hershey and vice versa. Let's see. Well, they're kind of mocking each other at the moment. Pitcock not wanting to come through. Has a look back to see Lipera. up. Hershey um, has a look at uh, Tom Pitcock, who's already done a, a, a visage check on those around him. And still they're looking back because they fear Lipera. A uh, couple of motorcycles here as well, just offering up maybe a little bit of a bow wave, but the man... Lipera is uh, is not bad either. I guess you might say he's at 12 second margin. That seems too big with 2.8 kilometres to go. If they start cat and mousing, Brian, they could even get themselves in trouble. We saw that back in the day. Yeah, they're already kind of easing back yeah. a little bit. Uh, Van Seven and getting a, a little bit of a moment to get his breath back. Like you say, I don't think Lipera at this stage. I think the punch is out. He's like, you've got to remember he was in that original kind of group of three riders. Yeah. He's ridden significantly uh, on the front already. I think he's starting to tire a little bit. It's Van Sevenant for me. When is he going to have a go? Is, <laughs> is there going to be any he hesitation? Are they going to look at each other? The fact that uh, Tom Pitcock fancies his chances, so does Hershey. Tish been out too strong in, in, a, in a final like this, but he is. is he looking for a you know a last minute attack? But I think definitely Van Sevenant is the rider here, just looking to go on that kind of counter attack, trying to go solo. Um, and saving every ounce of energy he's got to be able to try and do that. Oh, do you know what? I just don't know. I don't know who to hang my hat on for this one. Uh, Hart, of course, says uh, Pitcock. I'd love to see it. But then again, the Hart is also speaking to me about uh, Mark Hershey, who's just on stellar form from a very, very strong team. He finds himself, after doing all the work all day, possibly on behalf of his teammates, he's up front, he's in this quartet. And seven, um, I'm not sure. I don't know how much effort he's put into getting to this position. But every pedal stroke they have that's not at full gas is going to favour him. I'd love to see Tace Benute do it, you know, for the oldies. That would, <laughs> that would just be something. Strada Bianchi went his way, don't forget, back in 2018. Kern, Brussels, Kern last year. He's still a danger, very much so. Lipera here at a margin of 17 seconds and others coming back to join the fun, but there's only 1,600 metres to go. They're coming into uh, the crowds here and Van Sevenen hits the front. I'm not sure of the wisdom of that, Brian. He feels yeah, like Pera, maybe. I was looking at that as well. Um, he, he clearly doesn't want the, the other riders to, to come on. He doesn't yeah. possess a sprint. I'd have just, you know, sat at the back of them and, you know, and used everything I can. Now that uh, Tish Minut is in the in the box seat at the back, he'll <laughs> be the, the rider that will want to kind of surprise everybody, hoping that Hershey and Pitcock will look at each other. But I think by the way the Finn 7 is riding, you know, it looks as if he, he'll take fourth place. Tish Benut picks it up, he goes, uh, just dropping in is Van Seven and Hershey, uh, uh, just one off the back where we find uh, Tom Pitcock. 1,100 metres to go, at least they know the final and the approach and they sail through at pace here. 
And the pace is knocked off by Tiespanut. He, know, he fears Van Seven who stayed with him. Hershey's still very much there. Tiespanut thinking about going up for a long one. Neutralised by Mark Hershey, who drifts over, takes Tom Pidcock with him. Tom Pidcock more than alive to uh, the threat behind at the 700 metre mark. There's the finish line up ahead, and they just fall into each other once again. Tiespanut, to me, looks very, very strong here. Van Seven looked like he struggled to get back to him. Uh, meanwhile, there are five riders here from the original breakaway with Lipera, who's still got a bit of strength about him, might only be for fifth place, I'm afraid. And here comes the uh, uh, the big group, of course, with Mathieu van der Poel. They have a look. Uh, van Sevenant is the first to panic, is he? Not quite just yet. Tiespanut waiting for him. Peo Bilbao is thinking about making a steal. He's going to try and bridge over here with 300, 200 to go. Van Sevenant picks it up. He's acting as lead in. Tiespanut looks very, very strong. Comes up onto the side wheel here and suddenly finding a space. Tom Pidcock goes for the barriers here. Tiespanut, it looks like he may well have this one. Tom Pidcock got the drive though. It's going to be three up. It's going to be on the throw. Oh, Tom Pidcock just gets there. Brilliant at work. That was fantastic. Just moderated his drive until the very last. Played an excellent game of poker at the very end. That was superb. What a race. Never disappoints. The Amstel Gold Race is a thriller every single time. What about that, Brian? Yeah, another exciting finish, wasn't it? I was just, I, when I, I saw him hit the front top count, I was praying for him, do, do not put your hands up too early. Not in this race. And he didn't. He, he left it, hit the line, put his hands up. Another good victory here, and I think, you know, it has to be well-deserved. You look back at 30-odd kilometres out, that significant group of uh, 12 riders made the difference, and, you know, it wasn't that kind of glory moment for uh, Matthew van der Poel. Good win for uh, Tom Pitcock, and, you know, they really did deserve that one. Um, you know, worked ever so hard uh, for each other, um, but it was the case of, you know, that group, they had to keep riding all the way to the line. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure Luke Rowe and Garrett Thomas have fallen off their chairs. <laughs> they have been uh, uh, guesting with what's occurring on uh, Eurosport Cycling. I hope you've uh, enjoyed that today. I'm sure we'll uh, be in their good company in the future. But uh, this man, Tom Pidcock, deserves all the plaudits. Kwiatkowski just uh, offering up his congratulations, as we do as well. That was a hell of a day, Brian. And um, talk us through this cat and mouse ending. Well, they, they knew, you know, they were coming. Van Seven had made it, um, you know, handed it out for everybody there because, you know, he wanted to really kind of finish in, in, in fourth place. Um, it was Tej Benut that kind of launched. He was, he was strong, but Hershey was just waiting for Tom Pitcock. Pitcock goes down the barrier side, and Hershey at this moment seemed to be, you know, is there a gap? You know, he was tiring. And he was coming in the end. Um, and like I was saying, I was just hoping that Tom Pickett didn't start to, uh, you know, put his hands up too early. But, um, you know, 100 metres ago, he hits the front, and at that stage, he was the strongest in the end. Good sprint there for Tish Minut. Van Semenut just going to hang in there for fourth place. La Pera, um, you know, shows his form in, in, in taking the, uh, the fifth place there. But when you look down that finishing straight, it was ever so close for uh, by everybody there but it was significant out on course that when this group of 12 went you know 11 teams represented that was a significant part on a rig it dropped forced ef education easy post to to do the riding they couldn't close and um, the favorite from the group um, managed to pull it off